Chairman. Uh, Mr. Chairman, the uh, tiny diaper that I hold in my hand is one made to fit premature born alive babies. Micropremies or ultra preemies, they're called. And when I first saw one of these little diapers, it, it moved my heart very deeply because I, I think I saw it in the, in the context of the numerous video recordings that have been released in recent months that uh, tragically demonstrate that the Kermit Gosnells of this world uh, have no monopoly on the abortion industry's unspeakable and murderous cruelty to pain-capable unborn children and to little babies who actually survive the trauma of going through an abortion. Uh, it is the little babies of exactly this age and stage of development that these little diapers were made to fit. And Mr. Chairman, it's, it's easy for me to understand why the abortion industry's shrill response to these videos has been to try to discredit them in every way possible. They really have no choice because if they fail to discredit these videos or to dissuade people from seeing them, uh, they know that anyone with a conscience who does watch these videos will finally see Planned Parenthood and the abortion industry for who they truly are. And this murderous industry will be rejected in the hearts of the American people. Uh, however, Mr. Chairman, a forensic digital analysis by Coal Fire, Coal Fire Systems Incorporated of these video recordings conclusively indicate that the videos are indeed authentic and show no evidence of manipulation or deceptive editing. Now this conclusion is supported by the consistency of the video file dates, timestamps, the video time codes, as well as the folder and file naming scheme. The uniformity between the footage from the cameras from the two different investigators also confirms the evidence that these video recordings are completely authentic. Mr. Chairman, our response as a people and nation to these atrocities incontrovertibly documented by these videos is vital to everything those lying out in Arlington National Cemetery died to save. The House of Representatives very recently passed H.R. 3504, the Born Alive Abortion Survivors Protection Act. And I'm told that Democrats in the Senate intend to filibuster even this bill that protects not unborn children, but rather little children who have been born alive. Now, no one can obscure the humanity and personhood of these little born alive babies or claim conflict with the now completely separate interests of the mother and the child. Nor can they take refuge within this schizophrenic paradox Roe versus Wade has subjected this country to for now more than 40 years. Mr. Chairman, the abortion industry has labored for all of these decades to convince the world that born children and unborn children should be completely separated in our minds. In the past, they have said that while born children are persons worthy of protection, unborn children are not persons and are not worthy of protection. But those same people who now oppose this bill to protect born alive children suddenly have the impossible task of trying to rejoin these born children and these unborn children back together again and then trying to convince us all to condemn them both, born and unborn, as now collectively inhuman, and neither of them are worthy of protection after all. To anyone who has not invincibly hardened their heart and soul, an honest consideration of this absurd inconsistency is profoundly enlightening. Because you see, Mr. Chairman, uh, this country has faced such paradox before. Uh, we have faced such self-imposed blindness before because there was a time in our own parliamentary rules in this House that we banned discussion or debate about the effort to end human slavery in America. But that debate did come, Mr. Chairman, and with it came a time when the humanity of the victims and the inhumanity of what was being done to them finally became so glaring, even to the hardest of hearts, 
that it moved an entire generation of the American people to find the compassion and the courage in their souls to change their position. And now to this generation, Mr. Chairman, that moment has come again. And I would implore every member of this committee to ask two questions in the stillness of his or own heart. First, is deliberately turning a blind eye to the suffering and murder of the most helpless of all of our children born alive in the United States of America who we have truly become as a nation? And second, is voting against or filibustering against a bill to protect born alive human babies from agonizing dismemberment and death who I have become and want to be remembered for as a member of the United States Congress. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would yield back.